ACC 213. Introduction to Computer Science for Accounting. Study Session 1. Introduction to Computer and Computing. Introduction. Computers nowadays help solve complex tasks and activities, in your place of work, at home, and other areas of life, computers help solve difficult tasks. In this study session, you will be introduced to the concepts of computing, the characteristics of a computer as well as its classes. The history and development of computers will also be discussed. Concepts of computing. Computing is the study of how computers and computer systems work and how they are constructed and programmed. Computing is a discipline that exposes the students to the study of how to use computers to handle computational problems. Computing is not just information communication technology and it is not just programming too even though the knowledge of programming is necessary for computing. Characteristics of computers. 1. Speed. 2. Accuracy. 3. Diligence. 4. Versatility. 5. Storage capacity. 6. Prompt decision making. 7. Communication. Classes of computers. 1. Analog computer. This is a computer that transmits data as electrical signals in a continuous wave-like form. 2. Digital computer. This is a computer, which transmits data as discrete electrical signals. Most computers for data processing applications are digital computers. 3. Hybrid computer. This is a computer, which has combined features of digital and analog computers. Classification of computers by purpose. On the basis of purpose, computers can be classified into two. 1. General purpose computer. This is a computer designed to handle a wide variety of tasks or problems. 2. Special purpose computer. This is a computer designed to carry out specific tasks or problems. The third classification of computers is based on the physical size of the computer. There are four classes of computers in this group. They include 1. Mainframe computers. 2. Mini computers. 3. Microcomputers. 4. Supercomputer. History and development of computer. The first epoch in the history of computers is when computers were people. The word computer originally in the early 20th century, was used to refer to a person who solved mathematical equations. Thus, there came a time in the history of computing that men in different societies came up with one tool or the other to assist in computational assignments. Some of these tools, which had been used as computers at different times in the past in different societies include 1. Abacus 2. Napier Bones 3. Slide Rule Computers as Machines As time progressed, computers moved from tools to machines, when calculating machines were designed and built for use. Let us consider some of these machines. 1. Mechanical Calculating Machines 2. Leonardo da Vinci gear-driven calculating machine. 3. Skickard's calculating clock. 4. Pascal. 5. Stepped Reckoner. 6. First successful mechanical calculator. 7. Difference engine and analytical engine. Electronic numerical integrator and calculator. Between 1943 and 1945, John Mockley and Press Per Eckert built what was known as the first all electronic general purpose computer called ENIAC. ENIAC was an acronym for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator. ENIAC made use of vacuum tube technology instead of the mechanical switch technology of Harvard Mark I, which made it much faster. It made use of paper card reader technology. Based on vacuum tube technology, ENIAC generated much heat when in use, and as such, it required a heavy duty air conditioning system. ENIAC's first task was to compute whether or not it was possible to build a hydrogen bomb, which was found feasible. Generations of computers. Many generations of computers have emerged which we shall briefly consider in this section. First generation computers. These are computers designed and developed between 1940 and 1956. Second generation computers. These are computers developed between 1956 and 1963. Third generation computers. These are computers developed between 1964 and 1971. Fourth generation computers. These are computers built between 1971 and 1982. Fifth generation computers. These are computers made from 1982 till 1990. Sixth generation computers. These are computers with improved technology that came into existence gradually from 1992. They can handle 10 arithmetic operators per second. 
These computers rely heavily on the use of networking technology. These computers are centered on the principles of high-performance computing. Summary of Study Session 1 In this study session, please note the following. 1. Computer as an electronic machine has come of age to assist man in carrying out computational tasks. A computer is a machine needed for computing. There are different types of computers today. 2. Computing is part and parcel of human endeavors. It is about reckoning or calculating one thing or the other. 3. A computer is an electronic machine, which accepts data and instructions as inputs, stores, and processes the same to produce information by way of reports as information. 4. There are different types of computers depending on the basis of their classification. We have analog, digital, and hybrid computers if we are classifying based on the mode of transmission of data as electrical signals. 5. On the basis of the purpose of design of computers, we have general and special purpose computers. The last classification is based on the size of computers and we have mainframe computers, mini computers, micro computers, otherwise known as personal computers and finally, we have supercomputers. 6. You have traced the history of computers to when people were computers, referring to their job descriptions. Thereafter computers became tools, where things like pebbles, abacus, napier bones, and slide rules were being used to aid calculations. After this, computers became machines. The first set of computers as machines were mechanical calculating machines or calculators. 7. About six generations of computers have been identified in the history and development of computers. 8. First generation computers were built from vacuum tube technology. 9. The second generation computers made use of transistor technology, which was an improvement over vacuum tube technology but were not free from problems of excessive heat and self-destruction. 10. The third generation of computers witnessed the use of integrated circuits and magnetic core technology. Study Session 2. Data Representation and Computer Arithmetic. Introduction. In this study session, you will learn the way data and instructions are represented in computer systems. You will also be introduced to data representation framework, data coding systems, data conversion systems and data representation in floating point form. Data representation framework. Data can only be represented in computer in form of electrical or magnetic signals. Electrical or magnetic signals can only exist in one or two states. These two states are called binary, which are represented as 0 and 1. Each binary digit is called a bit, which is either 0 or 1. When we combine a sequence of computer bits together as a single unit of information, we have what is called a binary character. Depending on the binary coding system in use by a computer, we can group 6 or 7 or 8 bits to form a byte or character. Each byte is stored in computer memory with a unique address and an extra bit known as parity bit for determining errors in the circuitry. However, we can combine a group of bytes or characters as an entity in a storage location in computer to form a word. Depending on the computers, a word can be 8 bytes, 64 bits or 4 bytes, 32 bits. Below is the metric table in computer arithmetic. 8 bits equals 1 byte. 1 byte equals 1 character. 1024 bytes equals 1 kilobyte. 1024 kilobytes equals 1 megabyte. 1024 megabytes equals 1 gigabyte. Data coding system. Data coding systems refers to the way data or instructions are being represented in the computer. Some of the common computer coding systems includes 1. Binary coded decimal. 2. America Standard Code for Information Interchange. 3. Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code. 4. International Standard Organization. 7. Number and Conversion Systems. The number system is the way we represent numbers. We have different bases for representing numbers, which you need to get familiar with. They include binary, base, 2, octal, base, 8, decimal, base, 10 and hexadecimal, base, 16 number systems. Here, you shall be looking at each of these number systems and their conversions. 1. Binary number system and conversion. 2. Converting a number to base 2. 3. Converting binary number to decimal. 4. Octal number system and conversion. 5. Decimal number system and conversion. 6. Hexadecimal number system and conversion. Summary of study session 2. In this study session, please note the following. 1. Data and instructions are represented in computer as electrical signals in binary modes. There are different number systems for data coding in computer. 
2. Data or instructions in computer are represented in electrical or magnetic signals. These signals can be in any of two states, present or absent duly represented as 1 or 0 respectively. The system of representing data in form of 0 and 1 is called binary system. 3. A binary digit is called bit while a collection of bits is called byte or character and a collection of bytes is called word and computer system. 4. Each byte stored in a computer memory has a unique address and carries an extra bit called parity bit for parity checking or detecting errors in circuitry. We can convert a data from one base to another using either substitution method or division or multiplication method as the case may be. 5. Data may be in decimal base 10 octal base 8 or hexadecimal base 16 but they would be converted to binary base 2 to be represented in the computer. Study Session 3. Computer System and Computer Hardware. Introduction. Computer hardware is the physical part of a computer, as distinguished from the computer software that executes or runs on the hardware. This study session intended to teach you the concept of computer system, computer hardware configuration and computer output media devices. The concept of computer hardware and computer configuration. The collection of the tangible parts of the computer system is called computer hardware. It is the physical elements of a computer, such as the keyboard, mouse, and hard disk. The hardware is the direct opposite of computer software, which describes the intangible part of the computer system that exists in ideas, applications and concepts. Computer Input Media and Devices for Data Entry The input media and devices are computer peripherals, which transmit information to the computer memory. 1. Traditional Computer Input Media Theses includes, punch cards, keyboards, mouse and floppy disks. 2. Modern computer input media and devices. These include joystick, trackball, touchscreen, light pen, digitizer and voice recognition. Computer output media and devices. After processing, data inputted into the computer system come out as an output information. Output exists in two different forms either as soft copy output devices and hard copy output devices. Managing computer input and output devices. The result of any data processing is a function of the input-output management put in place by the organization. The effective management input-output devices of a computer system will ultimately affect the throughput of the system. Input-output management can also be achieved through polling, in which the system interrogates the devices to see which of the devices is ready to communicate. In a situation when there is interruption of operation, polling can also be used to identify the device that raises the interrupt. System interruption can assume one of three forms. 1. Internal interruption. 2. External interruption. 3. Software interruption. Summary of Study Session 3. In this study session, please note the following. 1. Computer hardware has been identified as the part of the computer that can be felt or touched. It differentiates the computer software, which is the intangible form or part of the computer system. It is important to note that the hardware and software must interface for the computer system to function properly as none can exist in isolation. 2. The concept of computer hardware and differentiates the various forms of computer input and output devices. Input devices were divided into two as traditional input devices and the modern input devices. While the output devices were classified into the hard copy output devices and soft copy output devices. 3. The concept of input and output device management was extensively discussed. Management encompasses polling, software and hardware interface, and device drivers management. Study Session 4. Computer Component. Hardware. Introduction. This study session is designed to give you an insight view to the major components of a computer system. It will also expose you to the various components that make computer system to work at utmost capacity such as the computer memory, system unit, auxiliary storage units and other devices. The computer system unit. You can recall that computer hardware is the physical part of a computer system. The computer hardware is made up of four basic components, which include 1. The input unit such as keyboard. 2. The central processing unit. 3. The output unit such as printer. Four. The storage unit. All these components can be grouped into two groups the external components and the internal components of a computer system unit. External components of a computer system unit. The following are the external components. 1. Hard disk. 2. Graphics card and AGP bus. 3. 
CPU cooled by computer fan. 4. PCI buses. 5. Motherboard. 6. CD or DVD drives. 7. Power supply. Internal components of a computer system unit. Some the internal components of a computer system include. 1. Power cord. 2. Chip. 3. Video card. 4. Sound card. 5. Ribbon cab. 6. Modem card. 7. Extra case. All these components inside the computer are usually connected on a board, which is normally referred to as a motherboard. The motherboard or main board and its components. The motherboard is one of the most important parts of the computer. It is can also be referred to as the main board, backplane board, baseboard, main circuit board, planar board, system board, or a logic board on Apple computers. Most importantly, the motherboard allows hardware components to communicate with one another. Components of a motherboard. A computer has many components, each with their own roles and functions. Some of the components are 1. Processor socket. 2. Power connectors. 3. Memory slots. 4. Video card slot. 5. IDE and SATA ports. 6. BIOS chip and battery. 7. Front panel connectors, USB headers and audio header. 8. Rear connectors. The central processing unit. The term central processing unit, refers to a processor, more specifically to its processing unit and control unit distinguishing these core elements of a computer from external components. 1. Arithmetic and logic unit. 2. Control unit. 3. Computer main memory. 4. Auxiliary memory. 5. Read-only memory. 6. Random access memory. 7. Auxiliary or external storage units and devices. 8. The traditional auxiliary or external storage units and devices. Summary of study session 4. In this study session, you have learned that 1. You have seen that computer hardware is the physical part of a computer system. 2. We observe that all these components can be grouped into two groups the external components and internal components of a computer system unit. 3. The component of a computer system unit, we also looked at the component of a computer main memory, also we looked at the various external storage units and devices. Study Session 5. Concept of Computer Software. Introduction. A program can also be referred to as an application and the two words are used interchangeably. This session will introduce you to the concepts of computer software and computer program, system utilities, service program and service routines. Computer Software and Computer Program. Computer Software, simply called software is made of one or more computer programs. This means that computer software is computer program which refers to any set of machine readable. Usually, people tend to emphasize only the instructions and ignore the data when talking about software. From the foregoing, can we still say that there is any difference between software and program? Yes, let us identify the difference. 1. Program is any set of instructions that are executed by a machine. The word program predated the two words software and computer. 2. Software is a broad term which includes programs, data and other related files that are used in accomplishing certain tasks in a computer or any computing device. Types of computer software. 1. Application software. 2. System software. 3. Firmware. 4. Programming software. 5. Drivers software. 6. Utility software. System utilities and service programs and library routines. These are other system software, which can be either integrated into the operating system or come as separate programs. 1. System utilities and service programs. 2. Library routines. 3. Performance monitor. 4. Security software. Summary of study session 5. In this study session, please note the following. 1. There are things the computer would like to do for itself instead of allowing users to do all things. The software, which allows the computer to do things for itself, is called system software. 2. Language translators as part of system software help to convert the source program to machine codes. 3. Library routines are also system software that assist program to call some subroutines in the course of executing the program. 
Study Session 6. Application Software. Introduction. This study session is designed to give you an inside view of some of the major concepts in application software. By the end of the session, you would have had an overall view of the importance of algorithm in computer programming. The concept of application software. The application software is software that enables users to perform different functions or tasks like create documents. The application software can be used as a business tool, assist with graphic designers, facilitate communications. Thus, the software which we use to carry out various activities on the computer such as typing documents, designing graphics, playing games are known as application software. The common examples we know include, Microsoft Office, Peachtree, Adobe Reader, and Internet Explorer. You should note that the application software cannot work without the system software. The application software can be classified into two. 1. User Application Programs 2. Application Packages Types of Application Packages There are so many application packages available. They can be grouped into two. 1. Application Specific These are programs, which are specifically designed to meet the need of specific user groups. 2. Generalized Application Package these are general purpose application programs which are not for a specific task. Advantage of application packages 1. It is written by a software specialist and may have a high quality. 2. It is continually updated by the software manufacturer with different versions. 3. It is well suited to the general public. 4. It is well documented with a user manual. 5. It is well tested, users can use immediately after purchase. Disadvantage of application packages. 1. If there is any serious problem with the software, the user may have to wait for the manufacturer or vendor to supply an update version. 2. It may not have some special features required by the user. 3. It produces a standardized solution which may not be applicable to all users. Computer programming languages. A computer program is a step, by, step instruction written in a particular language to execute a particular task. Thus computer programming is a processing writing instruction to guide computer operation. The person who writes the computer program is called a programmer. A programmer written source codes of the programs in a particular programming language. Classes of computer programming languages. The computer hardware can only process data and program which are in many forms that are 1 and 0, which is rejected to as machine language. Writing computer programs using the machine language is usually difficult and time consuming. Thus, over the years, Many computer programming languages have been developed. The computer programming languages include 1. Machine programming language 2. Low-level language, assembly language 3. High-level languages 4. Fourth-generation language 5. Fifth-generation language Summary of Study Session 6 In this study session, please note the following. 1. The following are the major highlights of what we have learned in this unit. We looked at the basic concept of programming language. You have learned the various generations of programming languages, and gave some illustrations on the merits and demerits of each type of the programming language. 2. You have noticed that computer software consists of system software and application software. The software is the software that makes the computer work such as the Microsoft Windows, which we generally refer to as an operating system. 3. The application software is software that enables users to perform different functions or tasks like create documents. The application software can be used as a business tool, assist with graphic designers, and facilitate communications. 4. The basic concept of computer application software. We also discuss the various types of application software. Then we briefly discuss the merits and demerits of each type of application software. Study Session 7. Use of Computers in Data Processing Introduction. The electronic data processing method unlike the manual and mechanical methods has efficient data storage and retrieval capability. In this study, you will be introduced to the concepts of data processing. Concept of Data Processing. Data is the basic raw fact that is further processed into information. Information is the end result of processed data. Data is the input while information is the output resulting from the processed input that is organized in a meaningful fashion, such as the audited financial statement by the accountant. Types of data processing. The following are the types of data processing. 1. Numeric data. 2. Alphabetic data. 3. 
Alphanumeric data. 4. Complex data. 5. Floating point data. Sources of data processing. There are basically two main sources from which data can be captured or collected. These sources are 1. Internal sources. These are data collected within the organization, it could be from the source document or through interviews of staff within the organization. 2. External sources. These are data collected outside the organization. There are primary and secondary sources of data. Concepts of data processing and data processing cycle. The chain of data processing cycle is as follows. 1. Data recording. 2. Transmission. 3. Reporting. 4. Storage. 5. Retrieval. Methods of data processing. There are basically three main methods of data processing. 1. Manual data processing. 2. Mechanical data processing. 3. Electronic data processing. Electronic data processing. There are three basic classes of electronic data processing. These are explained in detail below. 1. Centralized processing. 2. Decentralized processing. 3. Distributed processing system. Factors influencing the choice of electronic data processing. The factors that influence the method of electronic data processing include the following. 1. Size and types of business. 2. Timing constraints. 3. Link between applications. 4. Information needs in the form which they are needed. Advantages of electronic data processing. 1. Collection, processing, and retrieval of data is done quickly. 2. There is less likelihood of error when data are processed. 3. Help companies create a clean, orderly work environments. Disadvantages of electronic data processing. 1. Subject to human error because the computer is garbage in garbage out. 2. When information is not properly stored, there could be a loss of information. 3. When the password in a computer is not very effective, then information could be stolen or altered. Summary of Study Session 7. In this study session, please note the following. 1. Data processing is the manipulation, conversion, calculating, and summarizing of raw facts into information. Data and information have different meanings, although they can be said to mean the same thing. 2. The data processing cycle consists of stages in data processing, which involves the origination of data, preparation of data, input, process, storage, and output. 3. Data is the raw material while processing has to do with converting raw facts to usable form no as information. 4. Data may be classified on the basis of the value they take. 5. There are two main sources from which data can be gotten or collected. 6. Data is the raw or the basic fact that is further processed into information. 7. Information is the end result of processed data. 8. Data processing cycle represents the chain of processing events in most data processing applications. 9. There are basically three classes of electronic data processing. 10. Centralized processing is desirable where the systems are in one place. 11. Decentralized processing is desirable where the systems are not in one location. 12. Distributed processing system is the best of centralized and decentralized processing. System. It is the arrangement of computers in an organization that is not in one location. Study Session 8. Concepts of Data Collection and Data Capture. Introduction. Data consists of facts and figures, which record in detail the many activities of a business organization. Data is the raw material of any processing system. This study session introduces you to data collection, capture, preparation, and control. Concepts of data collection and data capture. Data collection is very crucial and essential because it is the data collected that would be prepared for presentation or manipulation. If data is wrongly collected and prepared then wrong results would be generated as output. Definition of data collection and data capture. Data capture is the process of obtaining data in the machine-readable form right from its source. Computers can only accept data that is in machine-readable or sensible form and it is possible to obtain data at its source directly in the machine-sensible form. Procedure for Data Collection The procedure of data collection is also the same as the steps and stages in data collection. The steps in data collection depend on the form in which the data are at the point of origin, whether the data are in machine-readable form or not. Where data are not in a machine-readable form the following stages involved. 1. 
Data origination stage. 2. Data transmission stage. 3. Data preparation stage. 4. Data input stage. Where data are in a machine readable form. The four stages above would be reduced to three stages when the data at the point of origination are in machine readable form. Thus, the data preparation stage would no longer be relevant. Problems of data collection. There are problems associated with data capture or data collection procedure. These problems include 1. Cost involving. 2. Time demanding. 3. Vulnerable or open to errors. 4. Inconveniences and time wastage. Data preparation and data control. Data preparation involves the actual conversion of source documents to machine-readable form for input to the computer. Data at the point of origin do not appear in the machine-sensible form. 1. Concept and purpose of data control. 2. Data control for data accuracy. Data handling errors. Some of the data handling errors include the following. 1. Omission. 2. Transcription. 3. Transposition. 4. Random. Data control in batch processing environment. The control methods we can employ in a batch processing system would include. 1. Clerical control. 2. Cross-referencing. 3. Data verification. 4. Data validation and validation checks. Data control in an online processing environment. In an online processing system, transactions are processed immediately they are entered into the computer. Thus the data controls at the data entry stage would include the following. 1. Visual verification. 2. Use of well-trained data entry clerks. 3. Character, data item, and record validation checks. 4. Data control for data security. Methods of preventing data loss. 1. Security backups. 2. Transaction logging. Methods of preventing unauthorized access. Unauthorized access to data in a computer environment poses dangers such as 1. Loss of privacy as confidential information on individuals or organizations may be let out. 2. Business secrets may be lost to competitors. And 3. There may be deliberate corruption of data by hackers or employees. Unauthorized access or changes to system information could be detected through the following procedural. 1. Granting of authorization to users and varying the levels of authorization based on the purpose of access required. 2. Logging and monitoring of users' actions or activities. 3. Auditing of users' files. 4. Monitoring and controlling the activities of programmers so as to forestall any fraudulent changes to programs. Summary of Study Session 8. In this study session, please note the following. 1. Computers can be used to generate the much-needed reports or statements, but the data required for such computations and presentations must first and foremost be collected. 2. Data is the raw material of any data processing system. 3. Original data are recorded on source documents. 4. Computer can only accept data that is in machine-readable or sensible form. 5. Data capture is the process of obtaining data in the machine-readable form right from its source. 6. Data collection is the process whereby data are obtained at the source in a form, which is not machine-sensible but has to be converted into machine-readable form before they can be input into the computer. 7. There are four stages where the data are not in machine-sensible form. 8. There are problems associated with data capture and data collection among them is the problem of inconveniences and time wastage. 9. Data preparation involves the actual conversion of source documents, to machine-readable form for input to the computer. We need to have an effective control system over our data right from the point of data collection, data preparation to the data entry stage. Study Session 9. Concepts and Methods of Data Organization. Introduction. Data are the principal resources of an organization. In this session, Emphasis shall be on the methods of data organization and file manipulation. Data organization and structure. The arrangement of data to make them more relevant for analysis can be referred to as data organization. The organization of a subset of data within a broader set is called a data structure. The process of storing data elements in a systematic manner for easy access and analysis is called data organization. Forms of data structure. Data structure simply means the arrangement of items in a systematic manner. Data structure exists in different forms such as 1. Array 2. Lists 3. 
Q. 4. Stock. Computer Freak Creation, Design, and Organization. File creation is one application of the concept of an array. The idea of the array has been adopted in computer file creation. 1. Computer file creation. 2. Computer file design. 3. File organization. 4. Serial file organization. 5. Sequential file organization. 6. Index sequential file organization. 7. Random file organization. The computer files. Computer files may be classified based on the length of the file and based on the nature of the file. 1. Master file. 2. Transaction files. 3. Work file. 4. Index file. Concept of file manipulation. File manipulation describes the different operations that can be performed on files stored in a computer system. 1. Merging a computer file. 2. Sorting computer files. 3. File maintenance. 4. File referencing. 5. Updating a computer file. Summary of study session 9. In this study session, please note the following. 1. Data organization is necessary for effective and efficient data or information processing. 2. Data organization has been defined as the arrangement of data to make them relevant for analyzes. 3. File organization is the placement of records in a storage device. This can be done in a serial, sequential, index sequential, or in a random form. 4. File manipulation involves the different activities that may be performed on a file. These include copying, sorting. 5. File manipulation is relevant to keep the file up to date. For example, a transaction file is required to constantly update the master file. 6. File manipulation has to do with the different operations performed on files stored in the computer system where manipulation can occur in the form of merging files, sorting, referencing, updating, and maintenance.